back to another official Transparent Thursday. It's the second week in a row I've introduced this to follow up on Transparent Tuesday to handle all of the questions that I'm getting from each and every one of you. So before I get started, I just want to thank you all for just trusting me once again with your deep and personal information. And I'm going to do my best to offer any type of insight that I can to help you make the right decision, okay? So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. First question of the night is from Mrs. Kettley, okay? She goes, hello again, Tasha. I wanted to reach out to you about a situation that's going on with me and would appreciate your view on it. Now, I'm going to warn you, I will try to keep it short, but you might get a term paper here. Hell, we kind of used to that here, shit. I done read questions that was five minutes long. Hers ain't that bad, though. Mm -mm. I'm looking at it. This ain't, this ain't shit. I'm gonna knock this right out the park, girl. Okay. So anyway, I have been dealing with my baby father for a very long time. We have three kids together, and our oldest is 18, youngest is 13 years old. We have a 19 year difference between our age. So that means your damn baby daddy. Bitch, I can't even add right now. This wine is in me. 37. Yeah. All right, so he, 50, so he 55 years old. Okay. Damn, he my daddy age. That's like me dating my daddy because my daddy is 55 years old. Girl, you a strong ass woman. Let me keep reading this question, okay? I have been living with this man since I was 17 years old. Yep, that's my goddamn daddy. <laughs> my daddy was known to keep a 19-year-old side piece. Oh, my God. And he always seemed to get him pregnant, too. Mm -hmm. It's like he done done your ass. Called me one time to help him pay child support. I gave him the money, though. I did. As you can imagine, because of our age difference, he is a very jealous person. But that's the type of person he generally is whether he was with a person his own age, and I don't think it would have made a difference. He accuses me with everyone. No one is off limits, from random persons to friends to even family members. Oh, did I mention we are going to get married next summer? Now, you're probably wondering why we have been together for so long and never married. Well, I must admit, I never had the wants to get married. I thought marriage is not respectable as it should be, and people just got married just for the heck of it. But as time went on, I started to entertain the idea and felt differently regarding getting married, especially if I'm putting up with so much crap. I might as well be married. So fast forward now, we're about to tie the knot further down the line. But the main reason I contacted you was because the fact that for some reason, my fiance thinks that I slept with one of his friends and also a former neighbor that used to live in our building. God damn, he think you done. Now I don't know why he would think such a thing, but I swear I never did such a thing, but he absolutely is certain that I did in fact, sleep with them, and it really bothers me that he would think such a thing. Now, it's not like I ever conversate with either of them, just high and by type of thing, but in his mind, I slept with them. I don't even know what I did to make him think such shit when we argue, and I mentioned how he accuses me with those two guys. He says, oh, it's the truth. He's speaking like there's nothing that would make him think otherwise, even if the Lord himself came down and disputed. He would still think that I did that. That really makes me very upset. It's just too much to go through history, but what are your thoughts and suggestions so far? Now, I gotta tell you, I've gotten a lot of difficult questions here, but this one here is a dilemma. You got me up against the fence, okay, on this question. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what I think, and I'm gonna tell you how to handle this, okay? Because he an old man. Okay, now for you, you basically just told me your fiance that you're about to marry is stuck in his ways, and he's always been that way. And whether it's you or somebody else that he's dating, nobody is gonna be able to change him from being who he is. And if you're deciding to marry him 17 years later and he's 55 years old and you're 36, there ain't shit you can do to change him at all. 
The only person you can change in this situation is you. You can change your circumstances to have a different outcome. Now, I'm not going to tell you whether or not you should walk down the aisle with this dude. I'm going to be honest with you. I've dated jealous dudes in the past, and that ain't some shit that you want to give any time or energy to because it's fucking draining mentally and physically and spiritually. And nine times out of ten, when somebody else, and I know you've heard this before, tells you that you are with somebody else, they are usually trying to not draw attention towards themselves. And so you too busy trying to be perfect, trying to walk on eggshells so that he won't think that you're doing anything while the whole time he's doing something. That's the oldest goddamn trick in the book. Now, your kids are already older. You got a few more years before the other kid is 18. Normally, people usually get married is to protect the assets, meaning if something happens to him, all those years that you put into being with him, that all comes to you versus going to other family members. And so by you not marrying him and he drops dead tomorrow, the assets, regardless of how long you guys have been together, are going to be split between his kids and his extended family. And if his extended family puts up a fight, which they are because that's the only time people act stupid is at weddings and at funerals, everything that you worked hard for is going to go to somebody else and not you or your kids. Now, if you love him, I would tell him, look, we ain't gotta get married, all right? Your kids are already halfway grown, but if you wanna get married to protect the assets, fine. But if it were me, I would tell him, look, we don't have to get married because I definitely do not want you marrying somebody that you don't trust. So if you don't trust me, we don't need to go on with this. We could just fucking just keep doing what we are doing. And if I do decide to step out on you, I'm not married to your ass and I don't owe you any sort of explanation because my kids are fucking grown. Now we can either handle this like adults and like a 55 year old man should be handling a mature relationship or we can sever ties now and just see what the future brings us. And if the future does happen to bring me somebody else, then I knew the only thing that we got great out of this relationship was our children. And so you just got to know when to throw in the towel. I don't give a damn how long you've been with somebody. If you haven't decided to take that step, it's for a reason. And you need to listen to your goddamn gut instinct, all right? So if your gut instinct is telling you that this is not the right decision to do, then don't do it. Okay, your life is just now beginning. You're 36 years old. You're about to enter a next chapter of your life, which is 40 is the new damn 30. You can start a business. You can do anything that you want to do and not have to worry about this headache that's going to get worse as he gets older because the older he gets, the less dick he's gonna be able to lay. And so that's why he's gonna be quick to blame you for fucking the neighbors because he ain't gonna be able to lay dick like he once laid before. And probably while he was laying it, he was laying it to multiple young women such as yourself. And he was able to lay it so good. And that's why you stayed as long as you stayed. But as he gets older, he ain't gonna be able to keep pleasing you. And so this is typical when you get an older man who is with somebody who's not pressed and who's never been pressed to get married, which is what you told me. And that's a wonderful damn thing that you didn't marry him just because everybody else said you should be married. And so I commend you for that, but I can't keep commending you if you're gonna marry him just because, hell, you've been with him this long and you might as well do it now. If you ain't did it before, what's the goddamn press to do it now? Because it ain't gonna get no easier, especially when his balls start to sag anymore. Because the more they sag, the less his dick gets hard, okay? So think about that shit now. You got a whole year before this shit happened, okay? Next question. Hi, Tasha, I just subscribed to your channel. Love it, but I need advice. I got married at 21 and so far I feel like I can't trust my husband. He has a girl best friend who acts more like his girlfriend and I found out things from his past that makes me think he has once lived a homosexual lifestyle once. Hence, the fact that him and his friends are going to Nashville to meet up with his coach. Should I leave or should I stay? Damn, I gotta respect her. She got straight to the goddamn point, okay? Now, I'm gonna tell you how to handle this situation here because you're 21 years old and I don't think any 21 year old should have to 
worry about this, especially when you're in a growth stage, okay? You're very young and I don't believe in marriage that young, okay? I think women should wait until they know for sure, just like a man does, that this is the one that you wanna be with for the rest of your life, regardless of those butterflies and y'all history together. Is this dick worth being the last piece of dick that I'ma taste until death do us part? Cause I do believe in marriage and I do believe that if you wait, if anybody waits, their marriage can last a lifetime if they take some time, get to know themselves first, establish their wants, their needs, their boundaries so that they're able to teach somebody else how to treat them. Now for you, if you're having all these suspicions at 21, I would say, I don't want you to leave on a hunch. Now, if you're absolutely certain that this is not the man that you wanna be with for the rest of your life, I would say just separate from him, okay? When you separate from somebody, that's when their real character tends to come out. Happens all the goddamn time. So if he ends up sleeping with his best friend who acts more like a girlfriend, or he doesn't care to spend any type of time with you, then you know that this was not the person that you should have married so young. And so if I were you, that's what I would do, especially if you are having all of these reservations now. And I know that you haven't been married that long, so it's not like it's gonna be a huge loss. This will be more of a learning lesson and you'll be able with the separation to sit back and watch his character. If he truly loves you, he's not gonna let you separate from him and he's not gonna take the separation that well. Especially if you give him the ultimatum, look, I understand that that girl is your friend, but I don't approve of anybody being close to you or knowing more than you or knowing things about you that I don't fucking know. And so you have to establish these boundaries and this is the perfect time to do it. I don't recommend following him because I think you may probably run into some shit that you ain't ready to see and it may alter your perception on men as a whole. But if you're having suspicions of him sleeping with other men, you have to take into consideration your health mentally and physically because typically young men don't tend to give a damn about that type of thing because they're too busy thinking with their dicks and not with their brains. And so if he's sleeping with women and men, he's putting your life at risk. And so I would just say for you, so you're able to really get a clear picture at who it is that you're married to, separate from them. Go back home to your parents, and you'll be able to see over the course of 30 days who in the fuck that you married. And that's when you'll be able to make a clear decision as to what you should do. Whether you should divorce him or whether y'all will be able to work it out. And if he wanted to work it out, he's not going to let you move out that easy. And he's definitely not going to let you live at your parents' house in peace. Because he's going to be bothering your ass all the time. But if he ain't bothering you, you know he bothering somebody else, okay? And besides, you're 21. You're too goddamn young to be going through this shit any damn way. You need to be out living your life and having somebody looking for your ass, okay? Next question. Hi, Tasha. My name is Palumi. That's a beautiful name. It's very unique. I like unique names. My daughter's name is Tantu. It just does something to my spirit because it's very different. I like different shit, okay? I am 18 years old and I'm from the UK. I've never had sex before. I'm a virgin. Oh, shit. I just had to celebrate that shit for her, I did. Cause that's a, that's a very good thing to say. Hell, I waited till I was 18 to lose mine, but I should have waited five more years after that, hell. Wasting my goddamn time, to be honest with you. I'm not pretty at all, and no guy has ever looked at me like he wants me. Okay, now I'm gonna need some wine. This is a, I'm gonna need some wine because this is a baby talking. She 18, okay? I have never been kissed before or nothing. I'm really skinny with no ass or boobs and it's making me feel some type of way. I often wish I was light-skinned or mixed. I'm dark-skinned so guys would find me attractive. And I hardly have any friends. I have no social life. Everywhere I go, I feel like someone is judging me. Help me. What should I do? 
God damn. Okay. All right. Palumi, Palumi listen, listen to me, okay? I know it's hard to kind of wrap your head around this. Palumi, I went through something similar, and I know plenty of girls that have. When I was younger, I wasn't as developed as the other girls. And so the boys typically didn't take interest in me because I didn't look like any of the girls that they were used to looking at either on photo, in TV, or in the magazines. And so typically the girls that were in high school that were more so developed and looked like those girls that were on TV and on the magazine, those are the ones that got the most attention. And so for me, it did develop some type of complex in me and lowered my self-esteem because I wasn't getting attention. And it took me until I was a little bit older to figure out why it was that I wasn't getting attention. Now, those same boys that didn't pay me any attention when I got older and it didn't take until I was like 24, maybe 23, 24 until I started to develop, that's when they started to pay attention to me. Typically boys your age are looking for a certain type of woman or girl that fits what they're being fed to every day on TV because they're taught at young ages to objectify women and not look at women from the inside. And so you having your virginity at 18 is a blessing. Now the self-esteem issue, I'm not even worried about you losing your virginity because I would hate for you to lose your virginity and then your self-esteem is low. And then if it doesn't work out with that guy, you are gonna fall into an even deeper depression, which is not good for somebody like you being so young, being so vulnerable and not knowing how to love yourself. And so I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna tell you what my mama told me because when I lost my virginity, I wish that I could take back that time. The first question she asked me when I lost my virginity was, how was it? And I told her, I didn't like it. And she said, Tasha, you probably not gonna like it until you get in your late 20s or 30s. Now, if I would have had that conversation with my mom before I lost my virginity, I would have never lost it. So losing your virginity at 18, honestly, is only gonna be beneficial to the guy because if you have low self-esteem and you don't love yourself and you view yourself and you're very insecure, as you stated that you are, you are not gonna be able to get any pleasure from having sex and from losing your virginity because pleasure comes from confidence and from loving yourself. And you're able to let yourself go and be free and be loved. And so until you're able to raise your self-esteem, love yourself regardless of how you think you may look because you have a very different perception than the outside world. Okay, you've only been around high school guys and maybe some college guys and right now they only looking at girls with big titties and big asses. For you, you're seeing that as a negative but I see it as a positive. And I personally believe that spiritually the reason you haven't lost your virginity is because spiritually you need this time to grow within yourself, to learn to love yourself, to build your confidence. So when you do have sex, sex will become more pleasurable because regardless of whether or not you have a man to please you, you'll know how to please yourself with or without him. And so right now, baby girl, focus on learning how to love yourself. And then we can talk about you sharing yourself with somebody else. Cause right now that shouldn't even be on your mind. Okay. So good luck to you, baby girl. And I will be emailing you a few books for you to pick up so that you can begin to read them and start to apply them to your life. Okay. And trust me, sex is not going to get good until you learn how to love yourself. And then when you start learning how to love yourself, you'll start playing with yourself. And then a man will sense that energy. And then you are gonna be able to tell him how to play with you so that you will be able to get somebody to deal when you do decide to share your virginity with somebody else, okay? Now I gotta go, okay? Now before I go, quickly, I am drinking the Barossa Valley Estate. This is a Shiraz, okay? Now Shirazes are typically full-bodied wines. They're very earthy, tend to have high fruit flavor, and just a bit of tang on the palate, okay? This one here, 
You're gonna taste a mix of black cherries and sage, like the herb. Now this wine is a very mature wine, okay, for you mature wine drinkers. It's not for somebody who's just getting started, all right? So I wouldn't, rec I wouldn't recommend it. If you're looking for sweet, if you're looking for fruity, this is not your wine. This is more earthy and full body. And you can get this wine, honestly, for about $13.99. I will leave the link below so that you can purchase it yourself, okay? Thank you all so much for watching. If you like the video, subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Unwind with Tasha K. And if you have questions for me to answer on Transparent Tuesday or Transparent Thursday, please send them via my website, unwindwithtashak.com, and I will get right back to you, okay? And I will also let you know when your question is live on the channel. And if you didn't like the video, hell, you can still subscribe anyway, just so you can cuss my motherfucking ass out. Not that I'ma really give a damn anyway. Now I gotta go. Bye.